My name is Dr. Arnold and today I'm going to be talking about the process of getting into graduate entry dentistry. Now, graduate entry dentistry is just as it says, it's entry into dentistry for graduates. Now, what this means is you can be in the final year of your degree and to apply um, to schools or dental schools that offer graduate entry. Now, different dental schools will have different requirements on what degrees, science degrees will qualify you to also apply for graduate entry dentistry. It's important to find out um, from the dental schools if they would accept your current degree um, for graduate entry dentistry. It's a very competitive um, course to get into. Dentistry is generally competitive to get into. Um, and with graduate entry dentistry, um, it's the same. You can have that competition. Typically, there are 10 to 15 applicants per place. Um, so it's going to be very competitive um, to get into graduate entry dentistry. The process of application is very similar to undergraduate dentistry in that you're still going to have to go through UCAS and a UCAS application. You can have to consider doing aptitude tests and you're going to need to write a personal statement as well. The one thing that you also need to consider is the fact that you need a reference. So somebody, a tutor um, at your university who will be able to vouch for you and write you a reference um, that will be sent alongside your UCAS application. Can you hack it? You've just been in a degree. Typically, it tends to be three years for, for science degrees. And, you know, for some of you, it might be that you moved away from your hometown, your home city. Um, and with graduate entry dentistry, it's likely that you'll now be moving again to a different city and you'll be doing that for four years. So remember, you've just spent three years um, in a different city. Are you prepared to spend four years in another city? It's an intense course, so it's going to be full time. Um, you're not going to have uh, much free time to do much else. So it's going to be quite intense. And are you committed enough? to be able to be in a full-time degree for four years. Another thing to think about is the affordability. So as you'll be away from your first degree, um, you would have student debt if you did take out a student loan for your first degree. Doing dentistry is gonna increase likely more than double that student debt that you're gonna have at the end of a dental degree. So that's something to consider. Uh, would you have to take on a part-time job to be able to, to afford and to finance you doing another four years? In my case, um, I had to supplement the support from student finance um, and the NHS with part-time jobs. So for me, I was working in as the part-time sometimes, or I would be um, tutoring and providing tuition for A-level and GCSE students. So it's thinking about what could you do um, as a part-time job to help supplement um, the financial support that you'd get from Student Finance England. Maybe um, it might be that you have a degree and you were able to also start working. So maybe you were an optician, a pharmacist, and now you're applying for dentistry for graduate entry dentistry. Maybe you could locum um, during your dental degree and that could help to supplement um, the financial support that you may receive from Student Finance England. So now it's time to think about the requirements. Some, most of the graduate entry places are gonna be asking for at least a 2-1 um, in your first degree. Um, so do make sure to check that out um, before you start the application process. The aptitude test, so the UK CAT, it's now been changed to the UCAT, is an aptitude test that you're going to have to take. Um, can you factor that into your application process, preparing 
um, for that. Think about the fact that you're going to have to demonstrate a level of work experience that you've carried out. Are you going to be able to secure sufficient work experience? Are you going to be able to handle um, organizing all of this during your final year? Remember, your final year, you're going to have your dissertation, you're going to have exams and assignments. So you're going to be able to are you going to be able to handle um, all of that in terms of applying successfully, as well as making sure you finish your initial degree strongly. I was in my final year, so I had my dissertation um, to write. I had my assignments to carry out, I had my exams to prepare for. I also had to be organizing work experience. I had to be um, attending the work experience placements. I had to be looking at the personal statement um, researching this application process. So it is a lot to handle um, during your final year. Who is able to be your, your reference, your referee, to write your reference, to go alongside your personal statement. For me, it was my tutor um, during my final year. Um, I told him what my plans were and he was then able to write me a reference um, with a lot of time to spare. So you don't want to be getting your referee to write your reference when there isn't much time because you don't want to be sub uh, submitting your personal statement um, with a few days to go or on the actual deadline um, because anything can happen computers can crash system might be failing so you want to make sure that your personal statement is done in good time you want um, people to have a look at it, to give you feedback, dentists to have a look at it and give you feedback. For me, I had the dentist who was taking me on for my work experience. I had her take a look at my work, my personal statement, and she was able to tell me ways I could improve on my personal statement. So you want to have that opportunity to get your personal statement proofread. If you've done well enough to get accepted for interview, um, it only gets more competitive. So at interview, it's going to be important that you can shine and do your best and um, to give yourself the best possible chance of um, getting accepted onto a um, dental course. Now, for interviews, I think one of the worst things you can do is to practice your interview technique by yourself. At the very least, practice your interview technique by filming yourself and then watching how you um, present, you know, do, do you come across confidently? Are you clear in your in the way you answer questions? Um, a step up from that in terms of preparation is getting your family um, to, to help you, to interview, to ask you questions. Maybe get your friends to interview, to ask you questions. And that way they can give you information and indicators on how you're doing in terms of presenting your answers. The next step up is to actually ask somebody that you're not um, that close to, um, somebody who's almost a stranger, um, who's able to ask you questions. Um, because you don't really know that person that well, it means that you'll be getting um, a close mock-up of what the interview um, atmosphere and environment will be like. Some people, um, will go on to courses um, that go through interview technique and also put on mock interviews. So that's also another way um, you could prepare quite well for interviews is looking up um, whether there are some courses where you could practice your interview technique. And that will be the closest that you could get to a, to a real life dental interview. Practice is crucial. You might have all the you know, the, you might have the perfect answers. The perfect answers might be in your mind, but if you can't put them across well enough to the person that's interviewing you, um, then you won't be giving yourself the best shot of getting a place at dental school. So make sure to practice, practice, and practice some more. When I was um, applying, um, I, I made my application, um, everything was all checked, everything was all cleared. And I got um, some interviews. So I got two interviews at, uh, one was at UCLan and one was at Liverpool. 
Now, my U-Clan interview was my first um, interview, my first ever dental interview. And it was crazy because on the drive um, for my interview, um, I had a car crash on the motorway. Just after Stoke, I had a car crash. Um, and, you know, talk about, you know, being under pressure, you're stressed out, you know, you're nervous. I had a car crash. Um, I was able to still drive my car um, into, into Preston. Um, interestingly enough, when I got into Preston, I actually got stopped by the police. Um, they said that, you know what, your car um, shouldn't be on the road. So what they did, they were understanding. Um, they actually said, you know what, we will take your car away. Um, you carry on to your interview. I was in Preston at that time. And because Preston is not that big, I was able to walk um, to where my interview was taking place. Um, so again, that increased the, the, the pressure, the, 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 the stress that I was under. A lot can go wrong on the day of your interview. If you can, um, try to get there the day before, the night before, so that you, you, you sleep at the, at, at, the, at the town or the city, and then you wake up there and you just have to walk there. Um, make sure um, that if you can, take a train, or maybe have somebody else drive you. Don't be like me, driving yourself to the interview um, destination because a lot can go wrong. Um, you want to do everything you can to take away the pressure and the stress um, on that day because you want to perform as well as you can. Um, so make sure to really consider carefully how you approach that interview date. One interview tip that I would give, bonus tip, is to actually do some deep research into the university that you're going to uh, for the interview. So for example, can you find out what the dental school has been doing in terms of research? Can you find out what the student societies, the dental student societies are like? Because if you can present an interview and tell them that, you know what, I've been really intrigued by this type of research that you've been doing, or I know about this type of society that your dental students run, and you're able to show that interest. So I hope that's been very helpful to you. Dentistry is a very rewarding career. Um, even in the short time that I've been a dentist, I've, I've enjoyed it um, immensely. And I would recommend it to anybody that's done their due diligence and you know, you've been on work experience, you've shadowed and you've said to yourself, yes, this is for me. And if that's you, then you won't be disappointed um, with dentistry. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And you know what? Down in the comments below, I want to know which is your first choice of uh, dental school that you want to get into, especially if you're um, looking to get into UCLan. Let me know in the comments below. Hope you have a good day.